Hello, my soccer universe. Well, yesterday, I think, was in many ways the best day at these Euros. I think we saw three really exciting games. Um, we saw many goals, especially in Munich, and we saw um, a minor upset with Hungary, hence I decided to play Hungary over Germany. Yes, my daughters helped me in that regard as well, because they like the red one better than the white one. And I thought, yeah, maybe this might be the last chance that I can wear a Hungary jersey in a review video. So there we go. I have the fan on. It is early in the morning and it's already warm enough uh, especially under the roof that i have to do it this way and yeah uh before i mean i mean i will do a jersey match but uh, i think what stood out for me yes it was not only action on the pitch but that every single jersey matchup is not only as i predicted but also as i wished for there was no mixing and matching of home and away unicolor it was beautiful yesterday Every team had different pants than uh, shirts, and this is and uh, all of them except for France went for their traditional look, and in France's case, it also fit. It was beautiful to watch. Uh, it was a wonderful day. Uh, after the uh, Friday evening was not so uh, great. Yesterday was a wonderful day to watch the Euros. Uh, just perfect. And I would say we should start in Hungary at the full crowd, which is amazing. Of course, there are some undertones there as well, because we know that the Hungarian fans, there are also quite some extreme elements in there that cause a little bit of outrage too. But uh, that aside, having a full stadium uh, that's behind an underdog team was pretty, pretty special. Um, and what was even more special is that I think for most of the first half, and that I saw only in highlights, I, I think I saw the game from around uh, shortly before halftime on. I actually saw more than I, um, than I expected from all the games here yesterday. But yeah, uh, France played beautifully, just didn't finish their chances. I mean, in the first half they should have had at least two, if not no, no, three goals. I mean, there was a big chance for Griezmann. I think he was then judged offside. Uh, then there was the uh, header by Mbappé, and needs to be in. And then my favorite move, and Griezmann plays to Mbappé, who controls it, flicks it with his heel into the path of Benzema, who shins it uh, off goal. That would have been chic, yes. But for me, just a beautiful play and all the brother great movements, that would have been just awesome uh, if that will, 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 will have gone in. But you also have to give it to Hungary, who gave it all, uh, fought, kept the spaces tight, were running. I mean, it was intense heat uh, there, which makes it even harder. Uh, they were kind of doubling up, tripling up, uh, moving. It was it was enthralling to watch in many ways, and then they get the goal when uh, I think the ball came out, um, and I think it was Fiola play playing it to uh, Jolai into the path of Fiola, who then uh, suddenly is clear on, on on the left. Pavar clearly out of position there, uh, and then also I have to have to say I didn't like the uh, positioning of Yoris. I think I know he's the captain, but I I think that Yoris is not uh, the best goalkeeper in the squad anymore. I think he's just standing a tad to his left, too far to his, to his left, keeps the, the short angle open, if you can pull, pull it in, and the uh, whole stadium erupts. Uh, I found the uh, celebrations going to this one reporter on, was a little bit, uh, yeah, interesting, because he seemed a little bit violent there. But yeah, uh, taught out of one uh, really interesting half where, yes, the lead for Hungary was flattering, but given that the amount of work they, they put in was not entirely undeserved. And Hungary hung in there for more, and uh, it really was, uh, yes, France were going forward, uh, but I found that France got a little bit frustrated. Um, I think uh, Dom Dembele, who came on for Rabio, which made sense, you know, get as great as the midfield with Pog, 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 Kanti and Rabio. Um, it's also a little bit more on the defensive side, I have the feeling. Uh, Kante also having, having not the greatest of games, in my opinion, uh, which says, a, because he usually plays great no matter what. Um, so yeah, uh, 
Rabio off, uh, damn Tempelon, he hits the post. Uh, then other, other chances, I remember one time that um, Mbappé was flying on the left side, and they, they just take the ball off him. Uh, Kleinheisler and Sala, I think, were for me the two players of the game. I, they just kept working, 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 that, again, despite the intense heat. However, uh, the pressure from France then just proved too much again. Uh, it was a long ball out from Joris that... Um, Mbappé could control uh, in world-class fashion and pull, 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 pulls it in. Orban, who has been unlucky already against Portugal, tries to clear it but uh, touches it well enough so that Griezmann can only have a tap-in. It is 1-1 one, one, um, already in the 66th. And then for some reason I think the heat took its toll. I mean Hungary had to work hard but France didn't produce any big chances. I think it ended in 1-1 one, one, and I said I was not unhappy with that, especially when I see how Hungary was fighting in that game. Uh, also made the group probably more interesting. And the group got even more interesting with the evening game. Um, which probably was the best game of the tournament so far. I mean, sheer number of goals, but uh, Germany with the same lineup that played already against France. And I know that many said, yeah, France was so, so much better, blah, blah. Yes, it, they were. And I think the German didn't play badly on that evening. They held their own with France. It's just that France was that much more talented. Uh, and, you know, um, know well how to play without the ball. Portugal, however, is an aging squad that kind of, you know, I don't say they have forgotten to defend, but I think um, defending is not their forte any anymore. And I find that the opponent of Santos, it's going towards the Austria, um, uh, Austria Netherlands selection that, that the coach does not fit the squad any, any, anymore. Germany started brightly and was knocking early. However, uh, then Ronaldo intercepts a corner. Play, play, plays out uh, to Silva and then full sprint on. Silva can then play uh, the ball to um, Jota, really cross across the field. And this is where maybe the, uh, the defending, especially of Gundogan, did not work well. Uh, he then squares it over to Ronaldo, who, who, who can tap it in for 1 0. And that deflated Germany for a second, but Germany kept on it. And especially Gosens, who had the game uh, for Germany of his life. I'm not saying uh, overall, but I think this was his best game ever for Germany. Uh, not that many, to, 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 to be fair, but he was the outstanding performer on the field. And also Kimmich on the other side. It's all the goals that Germany scored came in from crosses, uh, which was rather um, remarkable. Remarkable also that the equalizer came from an, uh, Golson's cross, where, I mean, uh, Havertz would have been there, but Ruben Dias put it in the net. And then the other one, Kimmich, uh, cross, uh, cro uh, cro cro cross in. There would be Gnabry there, however, Guerrero puts it into his own net. So two own goals. Two own goals. And uh, it was already many, many own goals, uh, this Tour to tournament. A rather remarkable statistic, I have to say. Um, so Germany gets the uh, goes into the half with a deserved lead uh, after a pretty interesting first half. Second half, Portugal I think tries, but it was not all that count, committing with the same moves. Golsons uh, crosses in for Havertz, who makes a tad tap in, and then just when Portugal tried, tried again, it is Kimmich on the other side, and Golsons with a f jumping up high, Ronaldo Esqueda makes it 4-1 in the 60th. Basically sadly in the game. However, you could also see that uh, the backline for Germany was not all that great because uh, the goal that came then from Jota, again uh, assisted by Ronaldo, um, showed kind of the weaknesses in the German defense and then Renato Sanchez kind of hit once the post. Um, you know, it could have gotten um, a little bit tight, tight again, but then I think Germany got the deserved win and you know i watched german tv uh they surely celebrated that one like they just had won the world cup which is kind of this other side i mean first yeah we're all bad and then suddenly yeah great 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 i think that this germany played very similar they uh Toto, thomas Müller said it right uh portugal led us and we probably put a little bit more energy in but it was also down to uh that portugal doesn't uh is 
not as familiar with playing without the ball than Francis. The Francis is just a bad, bad, bad team and he thought that the two performances were not that dissimilar and I actually tend to agree. It's just that Germany maybe had a little bit more edge this time because a little bit more urgency. Uh, because they, I said it in the preview yesterday, they needed to win just a little bit more. And then in the evening we had Spain against Poland. Um, not as boring of a game as Spain against Sweden, but this was largely down to Poland, who needed to get at least a point to not get eliminated. And from that point, point of view, I also said, I really hope that uh, Poland gets something out of, out of it, because I think they were a little bit hard done by with this red card, which kind of unsettled their game at that time. Uh, however, Spain was, we don't need to uh, kid around, uh, Spain was largely the better team in the first half. Um, but again, having uh, trouble uh, producing a good goal scoring chances. And I heard an interesting point, and I might agree with that. Not only, I mean, although I said that the Katusha, Katusha Stadium is a horrible stadium. I think if they play in Seville, they should have played in one of the other two stadiums where you have at least a home field advantage. But yes, and I understand the stadium doesn't get much uh, usage otherwise. However, the pitch is also pretty bad. And that doesn't suit the Spanish game very, very, very well. And then the move that they moved away from Bilbao, which has one of the best pitches uh, in Spain, you know, Veta region and so on. Uh, it just seems you took away all the home field advantage for Spain because, I mean, the players, the opponents just have to sit deep in many ways. However, uh, Spain produced chances um, here, here, here and there and then Moreno with a, a shot that falls to Morata, who puts it into net, and Morata scores in the 25th. Yes, it was shot; it was first given as offside, but in the end, uh, was turned around rightfully. So, one-one. I wonder the defender why is he behind Morata? That did not look all that great, to be honest. Um, and then I think Spain tried to control the game. Um, then. Uh, there was one uh, where a Poland showed his danger when Lewandowski suddenly was running from his own half. He's now Mbappé, unfortunately, got caught. But um, then uh, he, uh, there was a big chance for Lewandowski. But on the other side, uh, also, um, Spain uh, probably should have had a goal. 2-0 would have been a little bit too much at the break, to be honest, because Poland was in the, in the, in, in the game. And uh, second half, they get Paul Poland gets a goal, a really great cross from Josvjak. And Lewandowski shows all his quality against Laporte, jumping up high, uh, maybe with a little bit of physicality, but gets the header. Great header, 1-1. One, one. And I thought, yeah, this will give them a little bit of uh, lift to be a bit more in the game, because, you know, at that point, Spain seemed like ripe for the picking. However, um, Mola steps, who has been a little bit on too much on the physical side, um, steps, I think, on Moreno in the box, it didn't look like nothing, and then you see the replay, it was a pretty clear step on, so it's a penalty, but Moreno, who has not missed for Villarreal all season long, hits the post, the ball falls exactly to uh, Morata, and I know, it's, it was probably a harder finish than, than it looked, I mean, he has an open, open goal, but the ball comes directly from from, from post, he does the right thing in, in a way, but he doesn't pull the pull on, on that, and so Kind of the woes with Morata continue. Um, and then I think the game fizzled out. Yes, Spain tried. It, as I said, it was not as bad of a game as it was against Sweden. Um, however, Spain only can manage another draw, uh, which keeps Poland in the running, which makes uh, both groups E and F rather interesting coming into the last match day. So, um, I think the draw on balance, yes, maybe Spain would have deserved a little bit more, but on balance, I think Poland. Um, it was good that they got the point in many ways. So if we look here at the standings for groups E and group F, um, very surprising. Sweden ahead of Slovakia, ahead of Spain, ahead of Poland. That no one would have expected, to be honest. Uh, still, Sweden and Spain look to be the also favorites uh, to move forward, especially with Spain playing Slovakia. And Poland against Sweden is a, a real final. In many ways, because Poland needs the win, and uh, to go for uh, to go forward, um, and the other group also. I mean, France and Germany are ahead, ahead of Portugal. Hungary has a chance 
if they beat Germany, I'll beat in Munich. So they don't have the home 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 advantage, but that will be interesting there as well. And Portugal, although giving a high chance to advance, doesn't seem easy. The interesting thing is that if Portugal and France should play out a draw, which potentially could see both of them through, then Germany with the win over Hung Hungary would win the group and probably have the easier next round matchup. As for third place team, it now seems a little bit more um, telling. However, Spain in third place, I don't see Spain finishing in third, to, to be honest. So again, we need to look at the expected projections. Uh, for groups A to D, we had the projections already uh, yesterday. Uh, so let's go straight to the next, the next page. It's now Sweden is ahead of Spain projected. And you can see it actually, Spain may, might only finish second, which, as we'll see in the bracket in a second, will wreak havoc. Also, for uh, Germany ahead, ahead of Portugal, which is a little bit how I predicted it ahead of the tournament as well. Third place teams, I'm a little bit surprised that Austria at the moment sits there uh, on the top. I actually think that things could work out for Austria. I think a draw against Ukraine is probably enough, but it don't, can, you cannot be too sure. To be honest, Croatia, Switzerland, a little bit on the outside looking in at the moment. Um, so let's look at the bracket if we see Austria, Portugal, Slovakia, Finland going through. And look at this projected top half. The individual games are probably not as low as although Belgium, Port, 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 Portugal, that was at one point my projected final, looks to be like a big one. Um, but with Spain now finishing second, suddenly we have a France-Spain matchup uh, in the quarterfinals. We have Italy against Belgium, so that upper part is loaded. We also get an England-Germany matchup, which I would love to have. However, then you have Sweden winning, winning a group, and suddenly Austria looks like, oh, Sweden, that is a doable matchup. And uh, interestingly enough, that's the matchup I've seen in person the most four times already I've seen Sweden play Austria. So, uh, in, in, interesting as well, of course, the Netherlands would have a plum draw. I mean, you would favor, if it really pans out this way, you would favor the, the Netherlands easily going into a semi-final with a team that's not all that great. And so Frank de Boer could uh, reestablish his cre cre credibility. And now England fans, home field advantage would carry you in this scenario to the title. You would be favored in every single matchup over Germany, over the Netherlands, of course, and then over France. So at this very, very moment, if this is the bracket, if this is as it stands, England would be the most likely winner. However, since things can move around a whole lot, here is actually how I project it so far. France, Belgium, England, France going ahead again. The Netherlands, because Portugal losing now, moving in fifth spot, Spain staying stuck in sixth. And yeah, uh, a lot of movements down there. There's well, you know, there are many wrinkles that could go. As for tonight's lineup, I'm really disappointed. We only get one slot at six o'clock. That could have been at nine o'clock at least. Uh, I understand that you have to now one two one two, but I'd hate it that it's all at six o'clock. Well, you know, maybe an early an early night for a change. Um, Italy against Wales for who wins the group and Switzerland against Turkey. I still would say Italy second place might not be the worst thing for them, especially the way that the brackets uh, come out to be. Uh, also in interesting, we have only one confirmed group winner than Dutch so far, so I find it also highly interesting. In any case, let me know what you thought about the games yesterday. I think it was a great day. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my software universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.